I'm Kathy. I'm the owner of Stitch the Word. I'm excited to teach you the basics of hand embroidery today. We're going to stitch this project together from start to finish. And if you have any questions that I haven't answered, please feel free to reach out to me on social media or via email. I hope that today this will be like learning a new song. You'll have another way to worship our Creator. And I pray that this would encourage you in your walk with Jesus as we stitch the word together. So if you've traced your design, you have had your fabric like this and traced, and now we're gonna take this out of the hoop and flip it over. Okay, and we're gonna add a second piece of fabric this is just um, an inexpensive broadcloth, but it does two things. It gives the project a little bit more stability, and it also helps to hide your stitches that are gonna be on the back because now you've got two layers of um, fabric. So we're gonna take this and lay it over the inside hoop, just like that. And we're going to center up as best we can. Well, you will have another opportunity to um, recenter this at the end of the project. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, slide the hoop on. And then you want to take the uh, screw and just tighten it. And if your fabric has a little bit of give to it, go ahead and just take a little tug kind of all the way around. And if you've got any, you know, waves or um, bunches, you can just give that fabric a nice little tug and then tighten that screw. All right, it should sound like this. It sounds like a drum. That means that you are good to go. We want it nice and tight so that our, um, our stitches are easy to pull through. When you're holding your project, you want to make sure that you're not holding the fabric. So your hand is on the hoop itself. So I kind of hold my thumb there and then on the back I'm holding, whoop, let's see, I'm holding here so that my fingers aren't pushing because if we're if our thumb is on this or if our fingers are pushing up from behind, you're going to loosen your fabric and you're not going to get an even um, look. All right, so we're going to start with the green. And the way that um, I find it easiest to uh, figure out how much thread is, um, I just take it from, I put the bobbin to my nose and then stretch my arm out. So. It's about a yard of um, thread at one time. But honestly, if you're not comfortable with that much, it's fine to use less. Um, you'll just have to re-thread your needle more. That's all. I'm just gonna snip it. And then for the green, we're gonna use four strands. So let me get this nice and close. Can you see there are actually six strands in embroidery floss? So we are going to grab two of them and we're going to pull it across, pull it down. So um, I usually work this down. It, it will twist on you, so just kind of keep gently pulling it apart. All right, now I take these two strands and save them over to the side because if you use another set and you pull off four strands, you can take these two plus twos and make them into another four strand. All right, now we've got our needle and this is a size five embroidery needle. And 
we're going to tie a little knot in the end. Just like that. And if there's extra thread, then go ahead and snip it now. All right, we're ready to go. So we're going to start right here. And we're going to come up through the back. Now, we, this is going to be the back stitch, but our first stitch is actually going forward. So for a stitch length, really the important thing is that you're keeping them consistent. But this is about the stitch length that I'm usually going for. And I don't know exactly how big that is, but maybe a quarter of an inch. Okay. Now from here on out, we're gonna go ahead and pull our needle up one stitch length down. And then we're gonna put our needle right back in to the hole that we came down through the last time. Okay. And then we're gonna go forward. And back down. And forward. And back down. And we're just going to keep repeating that process of going forward one stitch length and then coming back and putting our needle down in the hole that we made with the previous stitch. And you're just going to trace this line, this little semicircle. We're going to go all the way to the other end, and then we'll come back and work on the smaller vines and leaves. So I've arrived at the end of this little vine. And I put my last little stitch in. And then I really need to go ahead and change my thread and get some new thread. So I am going to tie this off and just pull the needle out. And when you're working with at least four strands, this little easy method works great. So you're going to split that floss into two and two and twist it if it needs to be. And then we are just going to tie a knot, just like you would tie your shoelaces. And then trim it like that. So we're gonna work back this direction. If, if you still had more thread, you could go ahead and start working back. Okay, so I just took this first bit that we had left over from those um, where we pulled out the four strands and I took it and I measured it up against my thread off of the bobbin so that I had the same length and then I split that thread the same way and now I'm taking the two and the two and I'm just putting them back together. So really, I'm just kind of just smoothing it back together, nothing fancy. So if we just finished right here, we're gonna move to this little leaf first. So in order to do these leaves, we're gonna do what's called a fishbone stitch. Um, we're, we're really gonna make it only three stitches per leaf. So we're gonna start at the top and then come all the way down to the tip where it meets with the vine. Okay. Pull that through. Then we're going to go back up and I'm going to put my needle just a little bit down from that first stitch and to the side of it. What we're trying to make is like a little point. And then I'm going to put it in 
to that same hole. And then on the other side, I'm gonna put my needle up just next to that first stitch and down a little bit, pull it through, and then we're gonna share that same hole again. And there you go, there's your leaf. And see how it has just a little rounded point to it. You know, the great thing about stitching florals and nature is that God is the designer and there's always plenty of variation. So even if your leaf isn't exactly the same size or shape as the one on your drawing, it's fine. You don't need to worry about it. All right, we're going to start from, now that we've, our needle is here, our thread, we're going to go up through this little flower and we're going to stitch that stem. And we're going to do a back stitch where we go forward for the first and then up and back down. And the great thing about these erasable pins is that even if you miss the mark just a little bit, it's fine. It's going to erase at the end. Nobody's going to ever see it. And all you have to do is take a hairdryer to it. So on that one, I actually even came up in the middle of the stitch. It's fine. Just adds a little bit of variation. Okay, so we're going to do this little leaf. Same way. We're going to put our needle in at the tip. Come down to where it joins the vine. And then come up next to it, but down a little bit. And then either share the hole or just next to the hole. And then we're going to do that on the other side of that first stitch. Come up just a little bit down and then go down and share that hole. Okay. From here, next up would be this little leaf. This one may only even need two stitches, and that's okay. They're your leaves. You get to decide what they look like. Okay, and then from there, we'll stitch this little guy. And you just want to stitch the stem first, um, then come back and do the leaf. leaf and come down and the same thing we're going to go right there to the side of it but down just a little come down and share the hole and then again on the other side of that first stitch just down a little bit and share the hole so we're just going to keep doing this as we work our way back around I'm going and I just want to point out to you, like, this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you look here, see, I didn't, I didn't go exactly on that leaf line. It's just a guide. So remember, that's going to disappear when we finish up our project and take the hairdryer to it. These pink flowers, we're going to do... Um, four strands as well. So we're going to do these little pink flowers and we're going to use a stitch called a lazy daisy. Um, I don't know if it's very lazy, but <laughs> it does make pretty flowers. So we're going to come up in the center and oh yeah, there's a, there's a knot. I'm actually accidentally pulling through the knot from my green. So do you see how I buckled my fabric a little bit? I'm going to pull it tight again. Okay. Now we want to go back down, not in the same hole, but just next to it. And then we're not going to pull it all the way through. Okay. You're going to make a little loop. And I 
this is kind of how I do it. I hold that with my finger. I'll show you another way in just a second. And then I'm going to put my needle up at the tip of that bud or petal. Then I'm going to put my needle through my loop, pull the thread, and I'm going to pull that loop down. Now you don't want it too, too tight, um, but you do want it touching the fabric. Okay, then we're going to take our needle, and the way we're going to keep that loop down is to put our needle just on the other side. So you're coming up on the inside of the loop, and you're going down on the outside of the loop. There you go. Then we're going to come back down here and do the side petals. And I'm going to come just a little bit off and maybe even right next to the stem. And I'm going to come up just there-ish. Pull through. I'm going to go back down just next to it. And then another thing you can do is to put your thumb on the string so that it doesn't pull all the way in. And I'm going to go up at the end and back through. Then again, <clears throat> right here, we came up through the center of the loop and then we're going to tack it down by going on the outside of the loop. We're going to come back over here and now we're going to do it on this side and then just on the other side of that stitch. In this particular project, we are going to use um, some yellow thread at the end to kind of finish off our flowers. So again, even if your stitches aren't perfect, so I'm just sliding my needle through there. Or like in this case where they don't necessarily come completely together, it's fine. We're gonna put a little yellow stitch right there. Okay, you've got your first flower. So we're gonna move down to the next one and do the same thing. We're gonna do the middle first, up and then down right next to it. Then up at the center. And then, do you see how it's got a little twist? I mean, it's not the end of the world, but I'm just untwisting it. Pull through. And how tight you pull each petal kind of um, can change the shape even. So I'll show you on this side. If we come up, and we make it really loose, you almost get a puffier effect. And I, I personally kind of like that three-dimensional look, but it's really up to you. So if you pull it tighter, you're going to have it sitting on the fabric a little more. So we're going up, back down next to it. I'm going to come up at the tip and I'm going to try to straighten out my little loop. There we go. Take my needle through the loop and pull. Now, if you do accidentally have a twist in your thread, it's fine. It just makes it a little bit different petal. I'll show you. And then remember, we're coming up from the inside and down on the outside of the loop. Okay. 
Okay, so mine has a little twist. I'll show you what it looks like if I just run it in with the twist. See, it does fine. If you are having trouble getting it to flatten out, you can always take your needle and kind of pull your loop back through and resettle it or pull your needle out if you need to and um, take it back through a different way. So that one has a twist in it and see, it just gives the flower a different dimension. And we're gonna keep working our way down. Do the center petal first, then do the outside ones. Okay, so there's all of our flowers. And I'm gonna tie my thread off back here. I've got enough thread to be able to uh, work this maybe some more. Um, so, you know what? I'm gonna show you how to tie a different type of knot. If you'll come up under your thread, make a loop and then pull your needle through can make a knot that way. It saves a little bit of thread, but it's really whichever way is easier for you. So I always make two. All right. And then I'm going to tie off my thread again. We're going to start on our letters. Okay. So once we start on our letters, you want to make sure that you're fabric is pulled nice and tight and even and that your your letters aren't warped because this is how they're gonna go in so we're gonna start right down here at the very tip and I'm still using four strands and we're gonna do the same back stitch like we did for the uh, stem. So that first stitch goes forward and then each stitch after you come up one stitch length down the line and then back down. Now I will say when you're stitching letters it's probably a little more important to be consistent with your stitch length. Um, and also to stay on the line. Now, as you go around this curve, if you've been making bigger stitches, you probably will need to make slightly smaller ones um, in order to go around the curve. And you're just going to trace this. And it, it's all really one big line, um, with the exception of maybe the eye, where it's a bit like our um, stem, where you're going to go up to here, but then start stitching again down here. So I will show you that. Okay, so we're at the eye, so I'm going to continue my stitches up. Like so. And I came just a little above the line just to keep my stitches consistent. Okay, for the, the little dot, you're just going to make a small stitch. Not too big, just like that. Then I'm going to come back down right here and continue. So that'll back stitch there. And then I'm just going to continue to follow. Okay, so I finished up the word risen 
And then at the end, just tied that off. And now we're gonna do the letters. Um, so I'm using two strands of thread. And when you knot it, you wanna do a double knot um, just to make sure it doesn't come through your fabric. We're gonna start right up here at the top. And I like to make these guys either two or three stitches tall. Um, I have also done it where I just do it as a, a straight stitch, just like one long stitch. That's okay too. You can do that. Whatever you prefer. Now for that S, you're going to have to back stitch that. Um, but the rest of these letters, you could just make straight stitches if you wanted to. And this is pretty easy. It really is just tracing over the letters, but using a back stitch. And that's part of why it is important. Um, you know, one of the things we get better at with time is keeping our stitch length um, uniform. And it just takes practice, and I'm still not the best at it. All right, and that's that. Now for this one, I am going to run my needle up under some of these stitches and make a little knot because when you tie two strands, it can sometimes pull through the front of the fabric. So this will just make sure it's nice and secure. There you go. Okay, so to finish up, we're going to do the little buds and um, the little uh, finishing bit of the flowers. So these little buds are done with a French knot and I'm going to teach you how to do that. But honestly, if you don't feel like doing a French knot or if it, you find it frustrating, you can use the same technique that we used on the eye where we just make a little stitch and you'll be surprised how similar it looks. Um, so we're going to start and we're just going to move this direction again. So I'm going to start by making this little stitch at the end of my uh, flower. So I'm going to come up on this side and I'm going to just go back down over here. And it's, it's just that. It's just a little finish. All right, so for our French knots. And these little dots are just guidelines. You can put them wherever you want them. All right, I'm going to set this down to show you. I'm going to grab my thread, take my needle, and I'm going to wrap the thread twice. One, two. And once I wrap it, I'm going to put the needle back down, not in the hole, but just next to the hole. And then I'm going to hold this with my fingers and pull gently. And then I get a little knot. So let's try that again. I pull up. And I do find if you don't have a hoop stand, you've got to, I have to put it down either on my knees or on a table. Let's see, maybe I can get you a little bit closer. There we go. Okay. So we're going to take our thread and wrap it one, two, and then we're going to put our needle down just next to where we came up, not in the same hole. Then we pull and then I keep my fingers. I'm using my fingers to keep some tension on that knot. Pull it through. 
if you don't keep enough tension on it, it um, it can either knot up on you or it makes your um, your knot too early. You want to keep that knot flush against the uh, fabric. Okay. And we're going to move over here and do these guys. Well, actually, we'll do this little flower first. Gonna, oop, here we are. <laughs> going to come up on one side, and then I'm going to come back down just right there. And that finishes that guy off. Okay. All right, pull up. And we're going to take and wrap one, two, put our needle back in. And while we're still holding this thread, we're pulling. Okay. And then using our fingers to keep some tension and pulling through. All done. I'm gonna tie off my thread. There we go. So now comes the fun part. I'm gonna go get the hair dryer. I'm gonna get it nice and close so you can see the magic. are gone and if you want to go back and make any corrections or you know I'm okay with this s but if there's anything else you want to do now's the time and then I'm gonna show you how to back it so you received in your kit a piece of backing fabric so you're gonna take your piece out of the hoop Just like that. You're going to put it on top of the backing fabric. And then we're going to lay it back on the hoop. Now is the time to make sure you have it uh, centered. Because once we put it on there, we're not going to take it back off. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. If you need to do any, um, if you have any like bumps or ridges, but be careful you don't overstretch it or you'll, um, you can potentially distort your, your letters. And we wanna flip it over and make sure the back's nice and smooth and then start turning. Now, you may wanna get a pair of like pliers or something to just get it really nice and tight. Um, then we're gonna take the scissors to the back. You're just gonna take your scissors and first I kinda of give it a trim. Now, there are lots of ways to finish a project. Uh, and if you wanna Hop on YouTube, you'll see some different ones. So if you want to check those out before you cut, um, you may want to do that. I prefer this because honestly, it is the simplest and um, it doesn't require anything extra like a hot glue gun. Um, but there are, there are different ways and you could back this with felt. Um, I'll let you check that out. And also for me, I typically do not plan to take my projects back out of a hoop. So I consider this like a picture frame and I will just leave it in that. Okay. 
Now, if you want to take a little marker or Sharpie and you can put the date back here, um, you could put a Bible verse um, or even like a to and from if you want to give this as a gift. Okay, so your project kit came with a piece of ribbon and I'm gonna show you how I make that into a hanger. So I fold the piece of ribbon in half to make a little loop. And then I put the loop through the front and you can make it as tall or as short as you want it. And then on the back, I split those two and I bring them back around and tie a knot in the front. And then a bow. You could of course leave it as a knot if you wanna do that. You could just tie a bow. You can leave it off all together. There we go. And I would just trim these to the length that you want and then you can, it can be hung. Um, you can also put these in a small um, easel. They actually sell them at the Dollar Tree with little tiny canvases. 